So 113 Beta 2 is now available right off the back of an impressive IO 2022 developer conference. And here are a few of the top new features in this second public facing beta for the next Android release. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. Although ordinarily the developer options section is not exactly that user facing, it has gained a few new toggles and the removal of another. And here are the three options. Firstly, you get a new allow mock modem option. This gives you, or at least allows you to run mock modem services for instrumentation testing if you are a developer. There's also a network download rate limit in this section as well. With this toggle, you can kind of set the limit for all of your connections, be that with Wi-Fi or mobile data. You can adjust from 128 kilobits per second all the way up to 15 megabits per second. And we can foresee this being useful for simulating specific network conditions for developers out there. There's also a disable Bluetooth LE audio hardware offload toggle. And this may not be usable on your device, as the option itself is grayed out, although it is enabled by default and should help reduce delayed audio sync issues with specific Bluetooth devices. Sadly though, the enable Gable Dorsch Bluetooth option is removed, or at least has been removed for now. This was said to improve Bluetooth network stability wholesale, although it's not clear if it will return, but we do hope it comes back in a future Android 13 beta build. We recently saw the vibrate status bar icon disappear in the Android 12 QPR beta path, but the dedicated toggle was added, or at least a dedicated toggle was added in a recent beta 3 build. This toggle has now actually joined the sound and vibration section within settings on devices running Android 13 beta 2. So to set this toggle on, or at least when you do set this toggle on, you'll see a small, or you'll see that small buzzing smartphone icon alongside the Wi-Fi signal, do not disturb and battery icons in your status bar. It's not exactly a massive change, but you can enable it or disable it as you see fit from now on. Android 13 Beta 2 has also semi-restored the global device search that was originally added to the Pixel launcher back with Android 12 or the release of Android 12. It hasn't fully returned here as some of the core functionality isn't working as it should or as expected, but you do actually regain the ability to access the search from the persistent search Google widget on your home screen and the app draw as you would normally. At the moment though, it's only working properly for app search with other options or other actual things on your device missing currently. While that isn't perfect, it's at least a step up over the omission in the previous beta build and it should be rather helpful. Entering a general term will still open up the Google app and initiate a web search though for what it's worth. When setting up dark mode schedules, there is also now a new option to have the darkened theme automatically applied when your phone enters bedtime mode, and this wasn't previously possible. However, this doesn't appear to work every single time and naturally relies upon you setting up a bedtime mode schedule from within the digital wellbeing suite for this to work properly. In our testing, it doesn't work as intended, but we're sure that it can be fixed or at least easily fixed in the next Android 13 beta build. At this point in time, the wallpaper dimming feature that we have spotted just a few days ago is actually not working here either, but it could be that this will also be enabled in a future release and why this isn't working every single time with consistency. For larger screens, a number of changes have now been made to improve your daily experience with Android 13 Beta 2, at least beyond the Android 12L build that is available in a stable format. Should your screen hit that minimum DPI limit of around 600, you'll get that persistent tax bar, and this will now adhere to your system dark mode and theme accordingly. Also on top of that, when long pressing an icon on this dock, You'll also get a quick toggle to enter split screen mode without ever needing to enter the recent app menu. And this could be a great reachability enhancement when using larger tablets and foldable screens as you don't need to reach across your screen to enter this split screen option. It almost feels like a running joke at this point, but Google just simply cannot leave that media player alone in Android. And in Android 13 Beta 2, there are some further adjustments to the button layout this time of that notification shade and lock screen media player. Firstly, the quick skip forward and skip backward controls or any contextual controls depending on your media actual player have been moved from either side of the actual playback 
progress bar to the right side of this player. This does make it a little bit easier to find all of your controls in one accurate place, but these icons, at least as far as we're concerned, or at least as far as we can see, don't seem fully themed and they look a little bit out of stage at this point in time. There's also a new pop-up when you do initiate a long press on any media player windows as part of the quick settings toggle and that media resumption control pane, the pop-up will confirm if a player can be hidden with a more prominent hide and cancel circular M3 buttons that you can press. However, there is an omission here as the settings button has been removed in favor of a small cog icon in the upper right of this smaller player, but you can still access the media resumption controls by tapping this new icon. A number of key animations have been updated or tuned as well in Android 13 Beta 2. The most prominent is when unlocking your device for the first time. Tapping and pressing the in-display scanner on Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro series now pulsates a little bit more prominently, or at least in a more prominent manner. And once unlocked, you will see a new expansion animation that sees your home screen icons float, or at least expand into view. That's not all though, as the settings menu has also gained some slight animation improvements when entering submenus and sections. Tapping an option and the new section header and associated toggles will slide into view from the right side rather than popping on screen as it has in previous builds. Overall, we're seeing more and more of these little tweaks to animations and easing of these animations, and some of them you may have spot that we haven't, so be sure to let us know down in the comment sections below. The neat battery level widget that you can place on your home screen to track your smartphone and accessory charge levels has also been altered in Android 13 Beta 2. Now, should you lack a connected device such as Bluetooth earbuds, the widget will actually be filled with your current Pixel battery level. On top of that, when placing or searching for the widget itself, it now lives under a dedicated battery section rather than a somewhat confusing settings services section. So it should make this overall a slightly more useful and better overall widget to have on your home screen. Google has upped the minimum level at which the battery saver mode will enable from five to 10% by default in Android 13 beta two. And this is likely to help improve lifespan even further once it's activated than would be possible at that lower figure. To get around this though, you can always manually enable that lower option, but we're hoping it will return in a future build, that said. So that's everything new and really useful and user facing in Android 13 beta two. And when combined with the previous developer previews and that first beta, there seems to be at least enough that you would wanna sink your teeth into to maybe give this a try. Now that said, we wouldn't always necessarily suggest that people slap the Android 13 beta on their main device. And if you do wanna check out all of those videos, you can see those via our playlist link below. Sadly, this time though, we haven't got any exclusive wallpapers for you this time, but if we manage to hit 2,500 likes, I'll make sure that we get six, yes, at least six, brand new additions in our next Android 13 beta video for you to download. No kind of requests or necessary actions for you to take. I'll just give them away as normal. And you can always find our great, or at least our we consider great official nine to five Google design links via the description below if you wanna keep happy until then. With all that said though, I wanna say a big thank you for checking this video out. But until next time, this is Damien with nine to five Google and I will speak to you later.